Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I will give you a quick overview of the big talk of the town that is going on in the world right now and that is Trump's executive order that TikTok, uh, the platform, the social media platform has to be sold to Microsoft within 45 days or else he will ban TikTok. All right. That's kind of the setup and before we go on to the rest of it, uh, remember to hit the subscribe button and like button and all the buttons you can find there below the video. All of the articles, all of the stuff I'll show you today, I will link to that in the comment section below so that you can uh, see for yourself. But first of all, let's just get a quick look at what TikTok is, why this is a big deal, uh, why Trump wants to ban TikTok and then we'll have a look at what it'll mean to Microsoft if you own Microsoft stocks or you want to buy them. Uh, is there something you should be aware of here? And uh, at the end, I'll give you a brief overlook as to what I think this is a sign of and what, uh, what it will lead to. So first of all, we have a lot to unpack here. So first of all, TikTok is a media, social media platform. And if you are kind of like my age, uh, I'm 47. And if you don't have kids, then you have probably never really heard about it before, or at least it is just something that is uh, in a, a headline somewhere and you don't know what it is. But it is owned by the Chinese company called ByteDance, which is a huge corporation. And uh, the TikTok platform is kind of like YouTube, but it is with a lot shorter videos. I think the, the, the maximum length of a video is something around, is it 30 seconds, something like that. I had to ask my kids, they are 11 and 12. Uh, and I can tell you from their experience and my experience with my kids and their usage of TikTok that it is extremely time consuming. It's not uh, anything about uh, liking friends or writing your friends. But the TikTok has an algorithm, uh, an artificial intelligence that quickly uh, finds out what the user likes to see and then it just feeds them a huge stream of these short videos and uh, the stars, the content providers to this, they are making a ton of money. So that is kind of the setup. If we're looking at the user stats, you can see that uh, they are actually a bit more uh, girls, women, uh, than there is boys using it. And that is probably, I think at least, because TikTok actually started with another name or maybe they merged with, with another platform, I'm not even sure. But something called Musical.ly that was mainly about dancing and, and yeah, these, these sorts of, of showing different performances. And uh, as far as I can uh, tell from what my kids are telling me, that was mainly girls using that. But the boys have been running fast lately and are getting a larger and larger uh, percentage here. As you can see, uh, in my age group here, uh, in the males, uh, 40s and 50s here, that is not where they are aiming for. They're aiming for the, uh, the 10th and the 20s, meaning from around 10 up to just below 30 years. That is where their, their main audience is. So that is how it is. And um, these are the, the people that TikTok has really gotten a hold on. If you want to get a, an idea of the size of the company, you can see that the, it is the highest valued startups in the world. Uh, I'm not even sure what date it is, but as you can see, ByteDance, uh, Artificial Intelligence, uh, $75 billion. I think these are a bit outdated. Uh, this number should be way larger. Uh, the next one is also Chinese, and then we have some WeWork and a, a Airbnb and so on down here, SpaceX. But uh, ByteDance, uh, a huge, huge company with a lot of different platforms. Now. Uh, let's just have a look at the at the headlines that has grabbed the media the last days. Trump's issues order effectively banning TikTok. Everything you need to know. I'll link to this article below. Very long article about all the aspects, but I'll give you a brief overview here. Now, why do Trump want to ban TikTok? Well, uh, the, the, the main point here, what he's saying and what a lot of politicians are saying is that TikTok, are, they are spying on the users. And um, are they? Yes, they probably are. I found uh, a bit of stats as to what kind of data, sorry, what kind of data different uh, platforms are actually uh, logging. 
And as you can see, TikTok, they are collecting personal data and they're reading from the thing called the clipboard in the computer, meaning that they can pretty much see uh, a lot of what you're typing in and, uh, uh, and, and, and what you're doing on your, what you're writing and, and texting on your phone. So yes, they are logging this and they are saving this. So you could say that they are spying. Uh, the same with Reddit, they're, they're collecting the exact same kind of data. But if you're looking at two of the large US platforms here, Facebook and LinkedIn, they're collecting personal data, they are reading the clipboard, they are harvesting calls and text, and they're collecting data of friends without consent. And LinkedIn, collecting personal data, reading clipboard, intercepting emails, and hijacking and spamming address book. All right. So when we are looking at what kind of data TikTok is obtaining, it's actually not, not as much as Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, I saw a start saying that uh, Facebook are compiling so much knowledge uh, about your life and about you when you're using it on a regular basis, that if they had to print it out on an average user, it would fill up 1800 pages of, of close printed text. So 1800 uh, pages, that's about uh, what? Nine uh, average size uh, novel books. Um, and, and that is the kind of information Facebook has on you. Now, the difference is that TikTok is owned by uh, a Chinese company. And even though TikTok have some of their servers and the information and, and personnel located in the United States, uh, a Chinese company cannot deny the Chinese government uh, if the government is coming up and saying, hey, we would like uh, just to tap the entire database of data from you. They don't need a, a search warrant or anything uh, uh, from, from a legal side. They can just come up to the company and saying, hey, we would like your data and they have to give it. So that is the thing that concerns uh, a lot of politicians and with good reason. I absolutely think that this is of a, of a huge concern and um, I, I'm not using TikTok and I can see several uh, public uh, offices and, and large companies, they are simply uh, putting a ban on their uh, employees having TikTok on their uh, work devices, on their computers, on their, uh, yeah, their, their iPhones and so on. So uh, that is what the real danger is about here. Now, are there other reasons why uh, Donald Trump is is uh, wanting to ban this? I think there is a, a little part of it, or maybe for Trump a big part, I'm not sure. But um, if you remember the large rally that Trump were to, to uh, hold, I think it was in Tulsa, um, and he went out the days before and saying that a million people wanted to attend and they have booked this huge arena and they have booked a huge place outside where they could have 40 or 50,000, 60,000 people as well. And then around 6,000, 8,000 people turned off. And one of the reasons was that uh, the young age groups, the TikTokers, they uh, had played a prank on Trump and uh, they have found out that you could, you could book uh, a, a place here at this rally, or at least show your intent to show up uh, without it costing you anything. And that spread as a wildfire on TikTok. And all of the big TikTokers said to the followers, hey, uh, just grab some plates, some spaces here, some seats here at the Trump rally. So they think a lot of people are coming. And then no one showed up. And that was a big, big blow to Trump, Donald Trump. And really something that must have hurt his his ego. I think it it would have. So uh, a lot of people are saying this is also a part of it. He really wants to hit uh, TikTok where it hurts. All right. So uh, but that is a part of it. Um, oh, but then again, there's another part. And that is um, there is a trade war going on between the United States and China. And this is definitely a part of it. It is a, a, a big importance for Trump. And uh, now up to the election that is in less than three months, he has to show the US public, his followers, his core network, he has to show them that he's really, really doing something uh, against the, the Chinese power, uh, power base here. And uh, I think that TikTok is definitely something that is uh, fitting into that plan. No doubt about that. Um, but let's have a look at it. Now, if uh, what Trump is saying is that 
TikTok has to go into negotiations with Microsoft. Uh, I'm not sure why he picked Microsoft. Um, I know that Twitter, as far as I remember, Twitter also had some interest in, but uh, Microsoft, uh, they have to negotiate a deal with Microsoft so that uh, TikTok can be uh, merged with, with Microsoft within 45 days. Now, it is only a part of TikTok, and that is uh, TikTok in United States and Australia and uh, New Zealand, and I think it is Canada as well. Um, so it is not the, the entire world, it is only TikTok from these areas, uh, geographical areas of the world. Now, you can go and wonder if you personally would use a, a social media platform if you knew that you were banned from, from communicating or seeing videos from certain areas of the world. And I can tell you, I was researching some of this, and some of the really big stars in the TikTok space they are leaving TikTok right now because they don't want this uncertainty. So they're going towards some of the uh, alternatives. Uh, let's just see here. We have uh, the 10 best TikTok alternatives. Um, I'll put a, a, a link to that below. But there is uh, the Byte and the Likey and, and uh, Triller. I actually think this is spelled wrong, wrong. I don't think there's an H in there. But Triller is one of the big ones as well. Of course, Facebook and YouTube. But that is uh, kind of for uh, old people like me above 40. But there are a lot of uh, different alternatives. And I know that uh, Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook and all of these, they have been looking with big envy on uh, the, the, the huge success that, uh, that TikTok has had. They've had somewhere around 2 billion downloads of their apps in the last four years. So they are being ready to take over now. And I know that they are offering some of the, the big stars in the TikTok space, they are offering them several hundred thousand dollars each to move to their platform instead. So there's also a, I think you, uh, you could call it a brain drain or a talent drain. Uh, at least a, uh, some, some of the large stars are moving away from TikTok towards some of the other platforms. So just by doing this, and if it was Trump's intent just to, to kind of destroy TikTok, I think he's doing a brilliant job because uh, no matter what this deal ends up with, he will actually have uh, given a huge uh, a blow to TikTok. They have they are losing people left and right, and people are looking for alternatives. So, if uh, Microsoft should Microsoft should uh, succeed in buying uh, some of TikTok, then they would still be losing all of these content providers because what a content provider wants is the largest audience possible. And if they can see that a uh, United uh, that they either are in the United States and they are being cut off from, from the entire, from the rest of the world, or they're sitting in the rest of the world being cut off from United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. No content provider really wants only to be able to hit half the world. So they are looking for other platforms where they can really thrive and, and give content to everyone. So uh, I think uh, the, the, the part of destroying TikTok or, or really, really uh, irritate China by uh, hitting on one of their largest software uh, successes in, in the newer times, well, I think he's doing a brilliant job there if that was the, in, the, the intention. Definitely, no, no doubt about it. Now, is it okay for United States to ban TikTok? That's a good question. And uh, you could always talk about the freedom of speech and so on and so forth, but no matter what, these platforms are spying on you as a person, no matter what platform it is. And if TikTok are potentially giving information towards the, the Chinese government, then of course, uh, it could make a lot of sense to ban it, no doubt about it. And it's not something new and China is doing the exact same. You can see here, list of blocked websites and apps in China. And you can see Gmail and Dropbox and Google Apps and OneDrive and Slack and so on. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, Quora, Tumblr, Reddit, AO3, I don't know that one. Uh, but as you can see, they are banning a lot of stuff here. Uh, streaming YouTube, so Vimeo, Twitch, uh, Pandora, SoundCloud, news media, search engines. These are all stuff that is banned currently in China in 2020. So it's not like uh, United States are doing something that China are not doing. Uh, the question is, of course, 
Uh, is it uh, the right behavior from a Western uh, democracy to go in and force the sale of a company to a US company with the threat of banning? And uh, personally, if you ask me, this uh, looks like looting and piracy. Um, I think it is great to ban something that you think is spying, but if you at the same uh, at, at the same time are saying yes, we will ban you, of course, unless that you are selling your company to one of uh, our companies, then it looks pretty much like blackmail to me, and um, I think that is not suitable for a Western democracy. But that is my personal opinion, and you are welcome to disagree with that, of course. All right, so let's have a look at what happens if Microsoft actually uh, goes and, and, and buy TikTok. Well, first of all, what should the price be? Well, as you can see here, reportedly it is valued between 30 and 50 billion dollars. All right, so that is uh, quite some, some spare change to have to come up with there. Now, is that a lot for Microsoft? Let's have a look at their overall company. They have a market cap of almost 1.4 trillion euros. So uh, that, that is a, a, an insane amount of money they are worth. If we're looking down at what they actually have in their, uh, in their pocket here, their working capital, they, are, they have uh, 109 billion dollars. Um, that must be 109 billion dollars. Uh, so they would have to pay somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of their ready working capital uh, simply to, to, uh, to purchase TikTok. So it'll not be a, a, an impossible mission. They don't have to issue new shares or borrow money or anything like that. And Microsoft is a rock solid company. But to be honest, I simply don't see this being a good deal for Microsoft. Now, if you're sitting out there and you own Microsoft shares, I don't think you should sell them over this. But I must admit that I, I simply don't see this being a good, uh, a good deal for Microsoft. First of all, they're taking over uh, the, the, the TikTok platform if, that, if they succeed here. They're taking over the TikTok platform, or at least in some countries. Um, there's a, a people fleeing from the from the platform already now, and that will definitely be worse. Uh, that that uh, people uh, loss of, of uh, competent people over there, they will be losing a lot of users over this. And uh, there are enough alternatives, and all of as I mentioned, all of the big companies in this space that have not been on this. TikTok wave, they are looking to replace it. So there's a huge competition and I simply don't see this one fitting into Microsoft's overall very serious, very business oriented uh, image. And um, what could happen is that uh, we saw it with Donald Trump, all the young TikTokers, they were uh, they, they were, uh, I wouldn't say scamming him, but at least they were uh, um, doing a bit of a prank on him by uh, telling him that a million people wanted to attend to his rally and then 6,000 showed up. Now, imagine if this huge, huge group, um, they really got pissed with Microsoft and they started to play numbers of them. That could actually cost them something. They could lose a lot of uh, a public relation image towards this young group because they will know they, they will be known in this uh, in in this younger uh, segment as the company that destroyed TikTok and i think that can actually hurt their image in the long run and um, combined with the fact that i simply don't see how this can be a, a lucrative business for them then uh, i think they are they, they are making a bad deal here. Of course, I can easily be wrong. There have been a lot of mergers over the time that I thought were crazy and ended up with uh, as, a, as, a good, uh, as a good deal. I simply don't, I just don't see this being a good deal for Microsoft. So it is not something where I think Microsoft will gain a lot of, uh, of, of stock price on it. And I don't see them make a, a ton of money uh, either here. So, the last part, and that is the part with the uh, trade war, what is actually going on here. And there's no doubt, as I mentioned, that Trump is building this up uh, towards the 3rd of November with the presidential election, that he is the tough boss. He's the only one that can take on uh, China. 
and he already had this trade war and I know that normally that would be something we could remember for years and decades and so on but and it seems like a hundred years ago the trade war was going on but it was actually just last year <coughs> and Trump he closed a uh, phase one deal with the Chinese and look how happy they are it was really a success as they said but as I said at that point, and I was not alone, a lot of analysts, even Republicans, Fox uh, News hosts said this, that this was a non-deal. This was simply just a, a, a parade thing. It was just because Trump could not afford having a trade war running openly up until the November election. So he had to close it down, meaning that China got the best deal. And uh, it's not something you have to write me about and say, oh, no, Hans, you're wrong. China didn't get the best deal. They did. And pretty much all neutral analysts uh, agree on this. I think there's only a couple of, of opinion hosts on uh, on Fox News that can still see the fantastic thing in, uh, in that phase one deal. And if we're looking at it, it's actually quite funny to see how that has played out because um, as far as Trump was telling then China had committed to buying a lot a lot a lot of billions of dollars worth of US goods and now these are the lines uh, they are measured in Chinese import and US export um, there's a bit of difference there but compare these two and seeing this is the aim in 2020 and what we're seeing here is that they are below half of what was promised here it is split up in agricultural product, manufactured goods, energy, and un uncovered. I'm not even sure what that is. There's a big article here uh, explaining the graphs. But what will probably happen right now, because China, of course, has opposed towards all of this TikTok deal. And what probably probably will happen now is that China somehow will uh, retaliate. So this one will probably start going sideways because China actually don't need to buy a lot of stuff from from United States right now, because during the trade war, they did make a lot of new deals with new partners in in different uh, African countries, uh, Brazil, uh, Russia and so on. Uh, so they have a lot of suppliers of uh, agricultural, of, of different uh, energy, oil and so on. So uh, they're actually not so reliant on uh, importing stuff from the United States anymore. And that was a big price that, that USA had to pay for this was that uh, China didn't didn't waste the time during this uh, trade war. They were quick going out finding new partners. So a lot of the business United States used, used to have with uh, China, they don't have it anymore and they will never get it again. So what we're seeing here is that this trade deal, although it looked maybe a bit uh, okay on paper, uh, there's no, they are nowhere near following through on the on the promised purchases. And Trump knows that, and he knew it when he signed it, I suspect. But it was a nice piece of paper to show to the press and to the American people and saying, "Hey, see the art of the deal master here." Uh, and um, what the last uh, report I, uh, I I read about it showed that in the current state, United States and the farmers and so on, the exporters of goods to China, they are right now in a much worse position now than they were before the trade war started. So um, this was not a good deal. <clears throat> and tying this up with the entire uh, TikTok uh, situation here, I think without a doubt that this uh, TikTok issue is a part of this anti-China this this bit going towards China and it is a classical political move because when you are doing badly on the inter, on, on the national scene towards a, a, a big election then you have to find a, a, a big enemy and they, it, it is without a doubt that when Trump saw the numbers of the virus getting worse and worse and worse and that it didn't go away miraculously as he said then at once he started to hit on China and, and built this one up. I'm not sure what will happen in this case. I am suspecting that when we are getting close to the 45 day mark, um, I'm suspecting that there will come out some news about uh, they are in uh, very good negotiations and they're close to a deal, but they are giving a month extra or two months extra. And lo and behold, I think that this deadline will be moved on towards uh, after the November election. If you remember the big fuss about Huawei that uh, Trump wanted to, uh, to to ban completely, 
that has not really gone into effect yet and that was way past in uh, in 19 and 18 so I'm, i have a kind of a i'm a i'm a bit suspicious here that trump has a plan b here so that uh, if it doesn't turn out successfully he'll push the deadline and uh, well let's see anyway this is a a piece of the puzzle in a big big political uh, international uh, war and, and, and game here that they are playing up towards the, the November election and uh, it has maybe not so much to do with TikTok because uh, the Trump was won two years ago from several both Democratic and Republican politicians in the Congress that he should ban TikTok because they were spying so they have knew, known it all along this is simply a piece of the puzzle in this uh, a diversion strategy because he's not doing well uh, on the national front then he has to find some common enemy that where we can all uh, stare at while we're getting closer to the election that is how i think the scenario is playing out and how it'll end i have simply have no idea for my day-to-day -day routine it doesn't mean anything i'm not using tiktok and i don't suspect that neither the the, the, the purchase of TikTok or the failure of purchasing TikTok from Microsoft side, I don't think it will have a huge effect on, on the stock price. So that's how I see it. But uh, feel free to let me know in the comment sections if you agree or disagree, or if there are some aspects of this case that I have missed. That's all for now. Bye. Take care of yourself and your money out there.